Good morning. Welcome to worship, everyone. Let's stand if you're able. I invite you to stand. Let's sing together. This is an, an older song, but a newer one that we haven't done here very often. It's called The New Song We Sing. Let's join and let's sing out together. And I have believed in 
for the very last time. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. I've been saved, I've been changed, I have been set free. Amazing grace is the song I sing. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. longer defined by all the wreckage behind the one who makes all things new is proven it's true just take a look at my life hello my name is child of the one true king i've been saved i've been changed i have been set free amazing grace is the song i upon us that we should be called his children i am a child of the one true king what love the father has lavished upon us that we should be called his children hello my name is child of the one true king i've been saved i've been changed i have been set free is the song I sing. Hello, my name is child of the one true king. Whoa, 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 whoa. I am a child of the one true king. Whoa, 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 whoa. ask you to be seated. I just have a couple of announcements for you. Uh, first off, we want to say uh, welcome to a very special couple that are here today. Uh, Pastor Paul and Jen are here with us. We just want to, uh, if you haven't seen them on their way in, just want to say welcome again. And uh, you'll have a chance to see them uh, after the service. We're having the uh, celebration for Pastor John and uh, his retirement, his 62 years of service here. So we want to lift that up and um, just a, a good time. So stick around after that in the fellowship hall. Uh, you'll get to say hi to them and uh, welcome them and just thank Pastor John for all of his service. So um, we're looking forward to that. It's going to be exciting. So uh, it'll be a good time. All right. Uh, a couple other announcements to draw your attention to. Uh, we, the photo directory uh, sessions will be beginning this Wednesday. So if you have not signed up for that, please do so. It's on the podium in the narthex. Uh, you'll find uh, there's still some time slots available, uh, especially I think that Friday is still open. Um, but if you can find a spot that works for you, please do so. Please sign up. The website will be open uh, this week if you haven't or you're unable to find a spot that works for you. So there's a couple other options. So uh, if you're having trouble with that, please see me. I'll be happy to get you signed up and uh, get you involved in that. And remember, members get a, a free 8x10 photo as well as a directory. And uh, yeah, so that will be good. Uh, also, there are still spots available for the Trunk or Treat, which is October the 24th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. If you're interested in filling a trunk and decorating it and letting your creativity flow, just uh, see me afterwards or there's a registration uh, form available at the Welcome Center in the Narthex, as well as Alan Scott tickets. He will be here on October the 26th, and tickets are still available for that. Please see Ryan McAllister afterward or uh, uh, sign up at the Welcome Center in the Narthex as well. And then uh, one final thing, if you will pull out the insert that's in your bulletin, we are needing some assistance with the stuff the truck. We have our lovely uh, Vanna and Savannah <laughs> up here. <laughs> and uh, these are a couple of the items that we're looking for. There's a whole list of items on that uh, insert. So we're looking to fill a bunch of these buckets and give them to the NALC for the disaster relief. We're looking to fill a big truck. So uh, please, we could use your donations for that, and it's certainly appreciated. 
All right, thank you, ladies. <laughs> and uh, now I'm going to ask you to please stand for a brief order of confession. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea. God's grace is wider than the whole of the earth. Trusting in that mercy and that grace, let us make our confession first before God and each other, first in silent prayer. Holy God, we open our hearts to you this day and offer the reality of our lives, the fear that freezes us, the favoritism that binds us, the ignorance that hobbles us, the doubt that plagues us. Help us, we pray, that we will find courage in unlikely places, see the world with prepared eyes, move to those places where intentional love is needed, and have faith that you are with us. Grant us courage to open our arms to all welcoming them. With that same mercy and grace, this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. We are forgiven. We are set free to go out into the world and to be the loving, gracious, hopeful people that called to open our arms and our hearts to all. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, please remain standing. And we're going to ask our uh, scripture reader, Greg Dewart. Good morning. Scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, where he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have." Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, sir. I invite you to please pray with me. Come Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, we know that you are here present with us. Although our eyes cannot see you, our faith senses you. Take any stray thoughts from our minds and help us to hear what you would have us put into action in this proclamation. Your servants are listening. Speak, Lord, to our souls. Amen. Hi there. I met Pastor Paul. I met Pastor Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't met you, Jennifer, I'm sorry, but eventually we'll get there. No, it was, it was fantastic. It was, uh, it was great to, to finally meet the man, the myth, the legend. So, <laughs> humbly, of course. So, um, 
But no, great. Uh, we've got a lot going on this whole day. So you're not going to get any appetizer or dessert in this one. We're going meat and potatoes only. We're getting to the point, and we're going to go celebrate. So that's uh, what we, we were going to do this morning. So just to, to forewarn you. Uh, but we do have before us this morning one of the most well-known parables in the Bible, correct? It is one of the most well-known because it transcends all centuries and all peoples. It's the story that Jesus uses to teach us about love, about being Christ-like, and helping those in need. So it made sense that when we began our chapter study on intentional love, that the Good Samaritan was one of those parables that we lifted up. So we're going to dig into that a little bit here. But first, I want to bring everyone up to speed because I know there's a few here that uh, may be just visiting and that. We are in week four of our six-week study. All right. It's a church-wide study. It's called Welcome Home. Really enjoying this. Uh, we have walked through in week one what we called a reality check. We were encouraged to look at what the house rules in God's house look like. Um, and how we were living in it. We asked how ourselves if we had both feet in for the kingdom of God, or if we still try and keep one foot out there in our, uh, our worldly kingdom. Uh, we asked where we can do good, right? And so once we got through that piece, we looked at week two. And week two engaged us in what it fully looks like to have open arms, all right? Uh, to truly accept others in the name of Christ and to walk with them. And we talked a lot about our baptism and how that really equalizes everything, and, and it levels the playing field, and we all start at the same point as children of God. And then that led us into last week, which we're looking at our approach to what gracious hospitality looks like, and how we can show forth God's love. We looked at barriers to that gracious hospitality, and how trust and faith and love can overwhelm those barriers, and really point us in the right direction. And so then we were challenged on to invite someone to our house for a meal and for prayer, and uh, invite them here to Trinity so that they can continue to experience that hospitality of God's grace that we all come and enjoy on weekly. So we've been challenged, we've been gut checked, we've been broken down. And so now we're ready to start building ourselves back up, all right? To build up, do a little self-reflection on our lives and our faith and find ways to put our faith into action. And so what we're gonna do is begin by looking at intentional love. It's the love that started it all, the love that went to the cross for us. And I want to lift up again what our study book said about love. Last week we read this. Love is not a feeling. It's a deeply held commitment for the good of others, always worked out in tangible, practical ways. So love is not a feeling. I'm still trying to get over that part because I feel love all the time, right? But love is action. I think that's the intention behind this, this saying. Love is action. Love is an action verb. Love is a commitment. It's not a come and go kind of thing, but it's a true commitment, all right? It doesn't give up on things or people when times get tough, but it pushes through those tough times. It's tangible, which means it's practical. It's right there for us to grasp, and it's shown through what we do. So this is that practice what you preach kind of love, all right? Love doesn't give lip service. It simply puts others in front of self. And so this word intentional takes this love to a whole new level. Intentional love is premeditated love, all right? It's a heart thing, a premeditated heart. A premeditated heart is one that thinks out and plans ahead on behalf of the kingdom of God, all right? Now, I know it's hard to kind of premeditate a love action. Uh, you won't normally walk out of the doors and say, I'm going to go give 20 bucks to Marty on the corner, all right? But you might, okay? That would be a premeditated heart. It is one that plans on making a difference and responding to a genuine need if it arises, Marty may be that need, but it also might be someone else, someone perhaps left for dead by the side of the road that others may continue to walk by. And so a premeditated heart is one that understands what Jesus was talking about in the first part of our reading today. Uh, if you brought your Bibles, we're going to ask you again to open up to Luke, Old Testament or New Testament? <laughs> New, I know. It's softball, I get it. <laughs> I'm so used to it. For those who don't know, I'm used to doing that for confirmation. You read, say Bible, or whatever the uh, book is, and then Old Testament, New Testament. Always follows it. Kind of helps them learn. So Luke 10 is where we're at. And this is that setup for the parable. We're going to begin in verse 25. We heard it read already, but maybe you'll, you'll want to read it along. It reads this. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up and te to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responds, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the man answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. 
You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. A premeditated heart is one that is full of the love of God. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. There's nothing left. Fully immersed in that love. Heart, soul, strength, and mind. When our lives are lo- full of love for God, think how easy it is to show the love of God. Right? And we talked about loving our neighbors as ourselves last week. And again, we're going to lift up. Perhaps we need to learn to love ourselves a little bit better so we can continue then to love others a little bit better. But a premeditated heart is also a prepared heart. A prepared heart is one that loves God with that heart, soul, strength, and mind. A prepared heart is one that is full of love, ready to use that love in actionable, tangible, practical, and intentional ways for the good of others. A prepared heart, one with the full of the love of God, is one that is ready to act and will act when opportunities present themselves. This is a little sidebar, so maybe it's a little bit of (laughs) mid-snack. You know what alliteration is, right? It's that uh, repetitive use of a specific letter to make a point or sometimes to have fun. Those of us who remember Sesame Street, every uh, episode was always brought to us by a certain letter. Well, I was kind of reading through this message again. I was like, man, there's a lot of P's in there. So today's portion of the proclamation is brought to us by the letter P. All right. We've already talked about premeditative hearts and prepared hearts, but the Good Samaritan parable also has four other little P words involved. We'll see if we can get those up here on the screen. Powerful, personal, pastoral, and practical. All right? The Good Samaritan is very powerful. It speaks about the power of love and transcends all creeds and cultures and creates, if you will, a neighbor out of a complete stranger. How often do you get that? That's the power of the gospel. That's the power of this parable. It shows us that the power takes it from ourselves and places it upon others. So that's the first one, powerful. The parable is also personal, right? It describes with profound simplicity the birth of a human relationship. And so that has personal, physical provenance that reaches out. It transcends social and cultural taboos. And it lifts up as one that simply binds the wounds of another, all right? It's a very personal and intimate look at that. Of course, this parable is also a pastoral one. We love to use this in our world. It's filled with mystery and care of concern that is at heart at what is the best part of being human, caring for others. Um, It focuses on that pastoral care that all of us can provide for others. And of course, the story is also primarily just very practical. It urges us to cross those barriers of culture and community and simply go and be the hands and feet of Christ. Go and do likewise, as we hear Jesus say. So powerful, personal, pastoral, and practical. These are all stemming from prepared and premeditated hearts that are perfect for presenting what Jesus calls us to do for our neighbors. (laughs) And so the call for us is this. Go out of your way to show love for others. Go out of your way. Go to the places of need. Go to Biloxi, Mississippi. Welcome back. Go to Guatemala. Go to Erie, Pennsylvania. Go to Bell Camp. Go to Edgewood. Go to Baltimore City. I still say Baltimore City, sorry. (laughs) Ohio guy. But go to the places of need. Go be neighborly. Go and start a school. See, God always has a way of working when we least expect it. And this is perfect for lifting up right now. When we began looking at this study months ago and walking through it, we had no idea that Pastor John was going to be leaving us. And we especially didn't know that we would be having his celebration weekend with his family here this weekend, right? But God's always got something up his sleeve. So of all the weeks that we would want to lift up Pastor John and his celebration of his service would be the week that we talk about intentional love, Because that is what he modeled in his life, right? When there was a need, he responded. And we, you responded. Many of us weren't around years ago when the idea began to arise to begin a Christian school as a ministry of Trinity's congregational life. And although I know very little about the Austins, I'm learning, I do know this. That rose out of a genuine need that had to be addressed. 
And I know it had to come from a genuine need because people don't just start schools because they want the headaches of the administration and rules and all the other governing pieces that come along with the school. There had to be a need to go through all of that. But if there was a need to enhance Christian education standards for the area and move the gospel of Jesus Christ into the kids and the community's lives, that's a pretty good reason to do it. And so if we want an example of intentional love to lift up, we simply need to walk through the fellowship hall after the, the meal and go see what's been built on intentional love. All right? It's just amazing. The school sprang out from a prepared heart for God. From a family and a congregation that saw a need to prepare kids for Christ's message of love, and they put their faith into action. Through the congregational support and the leadership of the Austin family, most notably, as we talk about with Pastor John. But you see why it's important and fun to lift up stories of faith? God's going to put them right in front of you if you just happen to see them. And it may be a bit humbling, of course, for Pastor John to be doted on like this. But just wait, it's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Um, but when stories of faith and examples of love are available for us to lift up, we have to lift them up. That's how we overcome evil in this world. We heard that a couple weeks ago. We overcome evil by doing good and lifting up and reminding people that there is still good out there. This is what we do. Because this is intentional love. And so intentional love recognizes the neighbor in need and engages that neighbor with faith and action. All right? The school is a perfect example. That is simple faith in action. All right? The Good Samaritan is a great parable of faith and action. But there's also one other Bible story that can keep us focused on our neighbor. All right, if you still have your Bibles, we're going to stay in Luke. Turn to Luke 16. And we're going to start with verse 19. 16, 19. Probably heard of this one as well. This is a rich man and Lazarus. Verse 19 says, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. And we're going to stop there. At the gate, there was a beggar. Every day, it would seem that this rich man walked by Lazarus. Every day. Ignoring his need, probably not even noticing him. So that's an example of that class system that we've been talking about, the divisions of favoritism that exist. But that's the stage that we have for this, right? A rich man walks by a beggar every day. So, of course, the rest of the story follows. We'll continue reading in verse 22. The time came when the beggar died. The angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus down to dip the tip of his finger into, into water to cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. And Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. Only now he is comforted, and now you are in agony. Now, we're not going to focus in on this Abraham and his approach or the consequences of not taking care of those who need help. But we want to at least lift up the rest of the story so we have a context in which we can look at the whole piece. But we want to focus on Lazarus and his neighbor, right? The rich man did not see Lazarus as his neighbor, probably even as a human being. And we have the ability as humanity to come dangerously close to the rich man's approach in our daily lives. Dangerously close. Which is why it's important to have prepared hearts that are full of God and full of God's love so we're ready to share. All right? If we have a prepared heart, we are ready to act. We're ready to recognize our neighbor's need and go and engage. We don't walk by people at the gate. A prepared heart goes and looks for opportunities to show this intentional love. But if we're not prepared, we're not going to try and put ourselves into uncomfortable situations. If our hearts aren't fully prepared to serve, we simply won't. If our hearts aren't full of God's love... We will continue to act like the rich man and walk by our neighbors and their needs. So here's this week's challenge. 
In the same vein of the rich man and the beggar, we're encouraged to go and intentionally look for those folks who might be sitting at our metaphorical gates, if you will, who are our neighbors in need that we have to go and intentionally look for. And intentionality is the key. And it's important because we know about the ones that are asking for help. They're speaking up. Please help. But what about the ones that don't ask? The only way to find out about those is by developing relationships. If we don't stop and look at them and say hello, maybe we just keep walking by, we are never going to know what the needs are. And so intentional love looks for those who are marginalized and need somewhere to belong. When we recognize people as created by God and give them the dignity that affords all of us, that we begin to invite them into our lives and that allows us to be personal, develop those relationships, walk with them, and show forth the love of God. And we're going to have a little uh, help to remind us, if you will. A few of you may out there may have some of these cards in your hands. This would be the time to stand up. One of you, yay. It's going to take a while, but <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you should have quite a few, yay. Um, this is nothing new, all right? As I understand, it's nothing new to Trinity. I believe this little card was probably introduced a few years ago. Just start handing them out. Have fun. Um, don't just have one. There, there should be a bunch of them coming. This is a very easy way for us to remind ourselves that there are others out there that could use some intentional love. So this is that Love Jack card. Have you heard about it? Some of you maybe remember a couple years ago? <laughs> Otherwise, Ben's been lying, um, which he wouldn't do. I know he wouldn't. But these are, are, are little nuggets for us to use, okay? It's a little help to remind us. And it's not because we want the card or any kind of credit for some kind of act of love. That's the opposite of what we want. But here's why we do these. We're going to leave these cards so in the chance we happen to affect someone's life by doing good, that they have somewhere to share their joy. All right? They have somewhere to connect. Connect with us so they can go deeper. These are seed planters, if you will. Not for Trinity's glory, but for God's glory. So we go and do good. We connect with people in a place that can also help them do good and go deeper in their faith. This is simple discipleship on a card. It's just an easy way for us to remember it, right? It's an opportunity, an invitation, if you will, to begin a relationship with someone so that they can learn about our authentic joy through Jesus Christ. Shout out to next week. This is not for Trinity's glory, but for God's glory. All right? So, if it's anything, it's a reminder for us to do good. To share faith with one another. To love those whom we meet with the same love of the one who went to the cross intentionally for us. And showed us what love really looks like. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand and pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, be with us this week, this month, these years. Help us to be intentional about our love. To find those on the margins, or even not on the margins, but those who are walking without your love. Help us to embrace you, to live full, prepared hearts, so we can go out and act. All these things we ask in the one who acted on us, for us. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears, my God. Hey, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And I'm no i
have chosen me Your love has called my name I've been born again Into your family Your blood flows through to be saved for just a few minutes. This will be a short little portion in our worship service, just to take a moment to say thank you. Uh, we're going to have a time of joy and fellowship after worship, but understandably not everyone will be able to attend that. And so we were asked lovingly and uh, joyfully to have an opportunity to say thank you to Pastor John uh, during worship. So that is what we're doing. Um, worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is why we're here. And lifting up Pastor John, who, who served and faithfully lived this faith through action, is worth taking a moment and giving thanks to God. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we're not going to ask him to speak. All right, that'll be after the worship uh, over at the reception. But we do want to recognize the years of his presence here at Trinity, which is actually more than 62. <laughs> that's all we put a number on. Um, and I was kind of reading through a devotion. I wanted to, to find out what, you know, where our heart was. And I highlighted the scripture verse because I believe it captures the spirit of not only Pastor John, but the entire Austin family, as I'm getting to know, uh, know the family through your stories. Um, and so Galatians 5.13 sounds pretty appropriate. It reads, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. It seemed pretty appropriate. Um, as Pastor John has faithfully served this worship community and the children of Trinity Lutheran Christian School, humbly in love. Intentional love. Right? And for that, we're going to honor him this day and simply say thank you. So, uh, of course, none of us serves alone. So this is a family recognition as well. His family has been with him throughout the years, and that's intentional as well. So we are stronger together. So we also say thank you to them for walking with him through that journey. Um, so traditionally, we ask those who are being recognized to maybe stand. But in the vein of Jesus' counterculturalism, we're going to do the opposite. All right? Jesus led us. So we're simply going to ask Pastor John and Norma to remain seated. 
and we're going to be the ones who are going to stand and say thank you. So I invite you to stand. And thank Pastor John this morning. You know, so I kept looking over here. I didn't want to lose it. I don't even know him that well, and I'm losing it. <laughs> um, you all have met, left such an impact on this uh, faith community. It's absolutely worth lifting up. So um, we're going to stop there. But since we're all standing, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us take a moment, share God's great peace with one another. As you make your way back to your pew, I'm going to invite you to please remain standing for a time of prayer. <laughs> this is a good thing. And now let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you love all of your children with an everlasting love, and we can love others only because you have first loved us. So deepen our love for you and our love for others, so that, like the Samaritan, we would not pass by those in need. Forgive us for our complacency. Humble us to see the opportunities to serve which we so often pass by. And by your Holy Spirit, grant us the wisdom to know what to do and the will to do it. With this in mind, Lord, we pray for all those who have been stripped and beaten by various life circumstances. We pray for all the men, women, and children, both domestic and abroad, who struggle to maintain basic necessities like food and shelter. May those who have share abundantly and sacrificially with those who do not, so that your world may begin to resemble your kingdom. And Lord, we do want to lift up Pastor John and 
his, his whole family and the many years of service that they have given to this community, this faith community. Lord, we pray that as they go, it would not be a, uh, a goodbye, but a temporary farewell, that even though um, we grieve this time of transition, Lord, we know that uh, we rejoice. We have authentic joy because of the love that they have shared to this community. And so we want to lift them up and praise them for that. And we thank you for the love that you give them to share with us. So, Father, we also pray that um, we know there are many ups and downs. We pray, Lord, for all those who are struggling with grief and loss. We lift up especially the family of Tom Capallo, whose service of resurrection was held this past week, and the family of Lucille Schaefer, whom you called home this week as well. Give these families strength to trust in your guiding hand through this time, as well as the hope of resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord, now we lift up all those whose names are listed in our bulletin and on our prayer chains. We especially mention by name Richard Hisley and Richard Carter, Jack Cloman and Lynn Hostetler, Claiborne Norris and Chris Dean, Kathleen Causey, Dwayne Parker, Doyle Homan, Arlene Boyd and Pat Saunders, Mark Franker and Del Birch, Carissa Ackerman, Will Charbonneau, Norma Austin and Angie Jackson, and all those whose names we now mention, either silently or out loud. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, it was in the night in which we were betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink. And he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We remember by praying the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The feast is ready. Please come and eat. I invite you to be seated.
Please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us all and keep us forever in his grace. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us this day. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with his favor and give us his peace. Amen. And as you make your way out, make sure you stop by in the back and welcome and say hi to actually just all the pastors, any pastors that are out there, Pastor Jay, Pastor Paul, Pastor John, Pastor Chuck, if he's here still. Uh, just everybody, uh, make sure you stop by and say hi to them and also make your way over to the fellowship hall just for a time, uh, like we said, just for a celebration and reception of that. So um, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks for watching. Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church can be found at 1100 Philadelphia Road in Joppa, Maryland and at trinityjoppa.org. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Be sure to check out the Facebook page for our Trinity Joppa YouTube channel and please consider supporting our Patreon at patreon.com slash trinityjoppa. God bless.